It's beautiful. Just breasts. beautiful. That one I yes. have to get. Yes, we've seen at least two of them. At least two breasts. How many have you seen? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> hey, welcome back to our stupid direction. It's up for I'm Rick, and this is Barbara. Hey, also Instagram, Twitter, hey. Facebook, Jason Content, Thanks on Patreon, hey. follow us for the camera, and guess what? Bang! Huh. Follow us on personal YouTube channels in the description below. Today, we're actually doing a video. I'm sitting on your stuff. This is called How India Got Its Name. Ah, Hindustan. Uh, yes. Uh, and many other names. And I think Bharat, right? That's one yeah. Of Bharat is one yeah. of the names. It has a lot of Giant. lot of names. And once again, I didn't make this video. So How's the they Josh? Mom, uh, how's the Josh? Mm -hmm. if, if if you're supposed to scream hi, sir. How's the Josh? Hi, sir. There you go. <laughs> if any of the information in this video is incorrect, blame the video, and not me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's not our fault when the information on the video is bad because we don't see this going in, guys. Yeah, so we would just recommend it. Blame it on Rohan. Yeah. Um, so oh, my mom. Here we go. Do you know how it got his name? Never. Ah. India is one of the most important places in human history. For millennia, it has been a credo for human civilization and culture. Today, the subcontinent hosts over 1.7 billion people, which is more than all of Europe, North America, and South America combined. All within the confines of only five countries. India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Nepal, and Bhutan. The largest by far is the country Bangladesh? of India, with a population of over 1.3 billion people alone. While Pakistan has a population of over 210 million, and Bangladesh isn't far behind with over 160 million inhabitants. Because this land has had such a rich and extended history, it's also had a number of different names given to it by the people uh, living here. Yeah. But if we look at names used for the land by outsiders, we can see that all of these names have some Something in common. Generally, almost every single one of these begins either with a hen or in sound, and either ends or at least features a do or dia sound. If you put these two aspects together, one combination is India, the name the English-speaking world knows. But maybe more interestingly, if you put the other factors together, you'll get Hindu, which many might know as another name used to describe Hindu India. Stop. This not only reveals that these two words are related, but in fact have the same origins and mean virtually the same thing. Take Hindustan, for example, the name given to India Hindustan. by the Muslim Mughal conquerors in the 11th century. Dissecting this name, we get Hindu and Stan. Stan is <laughs> We stand. Stan. Stan. What's up, Stan? The Muslim influenced countries in Stan. So then Hindustan <laughs> basically means land of the Hindu. Looking at India, we can do the same thing. Ind and Ia. Ia is also just a common ending in Latin to mean land of. And that's why so many places end with Ia as well. So India basically means the land of the Hind, which we just saw means Hindu. The modern Chinese name for India is even more simple, Yindu, which, yeah, just derives from Hindu. I can keep going, but basically what I'm getting at is India's name is just the land of the Hindu in essentially every language from outside the subcontinent. So then who are the Hindu? Well, the Hindus weren't really a unified people group. There was never a Hindu empire or anything. Of course, there were empires consisting of Hindus, but that's never really how they were identified. More so, being Hindu was a designation for where these people lived. The original mm -hmm. name Hindu was applied to those who lived along the northern part it's of what they called to being the Jewish. River. Yeah. It's a people group and a belief system. Yeah. This river was not only the starting point for the rest of Indian civilization to spring from, but it was also necessary to cross to enter the rest of India from yeah. the west. So when the Achaemenid Empire came to control these lands from the west, they used the name of this important river to refer to the entire land and the people who lived here. And in their language, the Sindhu River became the Hindu River. Huh. And on the other side of the empire were the neighboring Greeks, and to them, Hindu turned into Indus. And finally, this was passed to the Roman who turned it into Indus, and that's what the English-speaking world knows the river as today. So, if this was the Indus River to the Romans, then the land around it became the land of the Indus, India. Okay, so India came from Indus, which came from Hindu, which came from Sindhu, the original name for this river. But then where did Sindhu come from? Well, Sindhu is originally a Sanskrit like I'm in school. word I'm taking notes. <laughs> by the people who settled here. And in Sanskrit, Sindhu was used to describe any large body of water. And I guess that technically means India, and all other forms of it mean the land of water. Which doesn't really make any sense. If there's a lot of water, then it's not land, it's water. But yeah, that's how India got its name. One it's last surrounded thing, by water, though. Hinduism didn't arise until much later, with perhaps its first usage in 14th century Persian texts. 
Hindu, we already know, but ism in English represents ideas, philosophies, and theories. It came to English via the French isme, which came from the Latin ismus, which of course got its beginnings from the Greek ismos. Yes. So when people of course, use of course the word to describe the unique ideas, philosophies, and theories of the Hindu people, it became Hinduism, the ideas of the Hindu. And that's how their religion got its name. An important aspect of Hinduism is karma, which essentially is the belief that the actions someone takes now influence how they fare in the future, with good deeds generating good results in return and bad deeds creating more misfortune down the road. A good example of this karma is my Patreon. All of the <laughs> Which in turn results in you seamless. Oh wow, seamless! Wow. So if you want to, that was a good integration. I'm not even mad. That was a good integration there. Thank you to those who helped keep this operation going. I hope you enjoyed this video. That was like that was a very Corbin-esque thing to do. That was smooth. Very Corbin-esque. I was like, oh, this is so interesting, and then he goes, bam, Patreon. Okay, I'll give it to you. That was good. That was slick. I enjoyed that. That was slick. Ah, that seemed like a good video. It I mean, it seemed like it was smart, so you guys could tell us if it was actually correct. Yeah. It seemed like it was, but once again, we're dumb. Well, it also... What would I know? Exactly. Never been there. She's dumb. You will love... You will freaking love <laughs> India. I may never leave. Yeah, you, you will love India. You'll love all parts of India. Even the parts we haven't been to. We've only been to... Well, he's been to five parts. Yeah. Yeah, you will. I I know you. Five parts. Yes, the only place that Corbin hasn't been that I've been is is Calcutta. Calcutta. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Is it by driving, flying, or? They're on opposite coasts. Yeah. How far apart is it? They're as far as New York is from LA. Well, not no. mile wise. I think it's only three hours. It's the it? east. It's it's east and west coast. So yeah. Mumbai would be like LA, and Calcutta would be New York. But it's half the distance. It's, it's like seventeen hundred miles. I think it's about three hour flight. It is. It's like it's it's as far. Mumbai well, is to Calcutta, just, what yeah. we are to like Dallas. Okay. Yeah. That was excellent. But, but they're the farthest coasts. But actually, India is actually as long as Canada is to the bottom of Mexico. Wow. So, yeah. The top of longer. Canada to the bottom of Mexico is how long they are. Really? But they're not as wide as we are. Wow. The the thing, and I hope I you'll never know that. I hope you'll see a video <laughs> of it at some point. Is the extraordinary diversity in culture and. Uh, biodiversity and geography it is the most extraordinarily diverse place most people Americans especially think of India and they get stereotypes in their mind they get mm -hmm. like people piled on trains cows walking in the streets and mm -hmm. dusty dirty mm -hmm. roads that's the stereotype mm -hmm. it's absolutely the opposite of all that yeah. did you go near water when you were there Calcutta is well, on the water Calcutta is on the water and Mumbai is on the water Pretty. Yeah, but there's some other places down in the south, like Goa, and in the northeast, mm -hmm. up in Assam, you will Beautiful. It's very wet, like somebody we know. Ah! Uh... <laughs> <laughs>